Okay, good morning, welcome. Let's pray and uh, begin our discussions for today. Mm, I'll just say a word of prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you, Lord, for this time. Father, we um, pray that as we learn from your word that we will be equipped and Lord, let the prophetic flow through each one of us, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that, uh, uh, Father God, uh, you want your spirit to work powerfully through every single one of us, Father God. And uh, Lord, we just say yes to it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's uh, get back into our notes. In the last class, we finished a prophetic word. Remember, we said the prophetic has many expressions. Things like prophetic word, prophetic intercession, prophetic power, uh, prophetic song, and also actions. Uh, we, yeah, so we covered the prophetic word. Let's look at other things now. We'll go to prophetic intercession. Prophetic intercession, we have covered quite um, elaborately or in detail in the prayer and intercession course. So I'll just touch on it. If you have any questions, you can ask. Okay, yeah, prophetic intercession. And what we are saying is um, uh, we can be prophetic when we are praying for others, when we are interceding for others, petitioning for others. It's possible to hear from God and pray. There are two ways of praying. One is just to pray whatever is in our mind. Uh, the other is to pray knowing what God wants. That is prophetic prayer or intercession. So how can we pray what um, God wants when we hear from God? When we understand what is on his mind and his heart. So that will require us to hear from him. What is God saying? And when we hear from him, uh, then we can make that a prayer and uh, you know tr see god work in that very situation uh, the first instance where we have the word prophet who who was that first person abraham, abraham correct abraham so when uh, abraham he his wife was taken by king abimelech at that time god gave a dream to abimelech and said that you know you should not uh, touch sarah and uh, i will rest you need to restore her back to uh, abraham and he is a prophet he will pray for you and you shall live so genesis 20 verse 7 god speaks to abimelech and in that he states that abraham is a prophet but what is the responsibility of the prophet in this case, he will pray for you. So prayer is a huge part of uh, being prophetic. If we lack a prayer, prayer life, then uh, the flow of the prophetic anointing, it will be hindered. Got it? So it's kind of directly connected. When we have a strong prayer life, what is prayer? We've, we've seen that it is both speaking to God and hearing from God. It's a two-way communication. So obviously, it strengthens not just my spirit, uh, but it strengthens my relationship with God. It strengthens my sensitivity to the voice of God. And I am able to hear better. I'm able to share better, but I'm also able to hear better, isn't it? So prayer life will make our prophetic ministry strong. And that's what we observe in the case of Abraham. He was a prayerful man. When he's a prayerful man, he's also prophetic. Got it? But uh, like, is it possible to be prayerful and not be prophetic? Yeah, that's also possible. When we don't want to uh, pray what God is putting on our hearts, we just pray whatever we want. Then you can be prayerful 
but not necessarily be prophetic. So it can work that way as well. OK, so yeah, so that is what we observe. All believers are called to pray. And uh, uh, we can be prophetic in our prayers. That is something we'll have to learn to do, to be prophetic. So pray as per what God puts on our hearts. This is something we have to practice to say, OK, God, what are you saying? Uh, and then start to pray that out. Now, how did God speak to different people in the Bible? We have many instances. There was a time when God communicated um, that there is going to be judgment. Why does God share this early? If there's going to be a judgment, uh, we, we will come to it in the book of Amos. God speaks to the prophet and he tells him there is going to be judgment. He shows him. So in the form of you know a plague of the locusts and then a plague of the of fire, which will destroy the people. Uh, so God gives him that revelation. Reason is it's a warning. What does a warning do? It comes ahead of the action. So that there is an opportunity for change, isn't it? So that is what a warning does. So why does God communicate these things to us beforehand so that there can be a change, so that there can be hopefully uh, uh, a change of heart from the side of the people? If there is a change of heart, then uh, what, what do we see? We see that God relents. Relents means um, uh, you can say, if God has said that, OK, this is what I'm going to do, there's a change. Even God changes his decision and says, OK, I won't. I won't do that. It won't come on you. OK, I'm going to stop it or uh, delay it. So it's amazing that God is willing to listen to our prayers and change his mind. And prophetic intercession can do that. In the case of Amos, that's what we see. He's a prophet of God, and he speaks of the coming judgments of God. This is there in um, Amos chapter 7. Okay, He speaks. He sees all this. Then what happens? He starts praying. And look at his intercession. In Amos 7, verse 2, his prayer is, O oh Lord God, forgive, I pray. Oh, that Jacob may stand, for he is small. So remember, we said intercession is to go to God on behalf of the people. So what is Amos doing? On behalf of the people, he's saying, God, please forgive us. You know, we are not uh, strong. Yes, we have made a mistake. But please change your mind about the judgment. OK, so when God uh, hears this, we notice God says, uh, I'm reading just portions of Amos 7, verse 6, the last part. God says, um, uh, verse 6, so the Lord relented concerning this. This also shall not be, said the Lord. So for both the judgments, by locust, by fire, God said, it won't be. It won't be. Because what did Amos do with the revelation? He prayed to God. OK, so that is something we have to understand, that when God gives us a dream or a vision or a word in which he's showing judgment, what can we do? Start to pray and say, God, we, we please forgive. OK, then uh, we, we are seeing that God is changing his mind because man is praying. So it's a privilege. Imagine it's so difficult, right, to uh, have any authority change their mind. God is changing his mind when we pray. So can we pray for forgiveness for our nation, for our communities, uh, you know, for the nations of the world? On behalf of our sins, we can say, God, forgive, forgive, forgive. We can pray like that. So when we pray like that, the judgments are stopped. OK? See, conditions and limitations uh, is when we are praying aligned to the nature of God. 
then it will work it see it's not like god is um, god is changing himself right it's part of his nature he's slow to anger he's gracious god yeah gracious god long suffering so within his nature if you make a petition it's possible that it would work out but if you push it to the limits like let's say god is saying yeah i'm forgiving you but people have to change or something like that and uh, we are we are disobedient then it may not work so those kind of things are there mm. Us, they are not knowing no, that we are praying for them. So the changes has to come from their side. No? The change has to come from their side of repenting and thing. So correct. Yeah, so then it would come under the limitations category because, see, what we can do as prophetic people or as a prophet is to intercede. Okay, so we are doing our part and within the framework like what God uh, is willing to do, God will change his mind. Got it? He'll do that. But again, the condition applies or the limitation is Hopefully, the people will change because in the case of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, they didn't. God is willing. He says, okay, okay, no problem. Like, you know, it won't. If so many people are there, then it won't be destroyed. But the people brought a limitation by their disobedience. So then it didn't work out. But if the change comes from the people's side, yes, it will all work out. How do we approach it? Our responsibility is to pray. Now, if God shows you something which you can do practically, try to do it. Otherwise, you can only pray. Because sometimes when we are praying for big things in the city, like, oh, let the crime come down, this and all. Tell me practically, like, it's so challenging, right, for us to actually go and do something. Unless God shows you, you go do this, then you do that. Otherwise, stay in prayer. Stay in prayer. Yeah. Someone about like something that they are doing that was against or uh, I don't know God reveals, and uh, when we start to pray or uh, intercede for them, and as you said, like God is willing to forgive, but He is also expecting us to change. But uh, and we pray, but how that person they may receive God's forgiveness, but how that person knows that okay god forgive me now i have to shift the way like that we know because we prayed and god's revealed to us we know but how that other person will know that's what i'm saying in some situations that capacity is there we can meet them directly maybe they have openness of heart we can talk to them but in some situations you don't have that capacity imagine i'm just giving a scenario uh, if you have a cousin who's so far away from the Lord and your cousin is studying in some other country, right? They don't even pick your calls. They don't even respond to your messages. But you're praying for them that, okay, God, you know, touch them, heal them, change them. What can you do beyond that? Tell me. Maybe you'll send them some link and say, go to a church. Will they go? Don't know. So you're, you're in a situation where there's nothing much you can practically do, right? Then if you cannot do anything, just pray. If you can do something, do that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Not sometimes. I think at all times he will. That that's the whole point of our prayer that God will soften their hearts and open their hearts. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So I uh, story time. <laughs> okay. No, I'll just quickly tell you. So one uh, prophetic. Uh, we have weekend schools. Uh, so one weekend school, I think pre-COVID, pre-COVID, there was one sister who came and we finished everything. Uh, and she came and said, please pray, pray for my daughter. Uh, she's so far away from the Lord. And what is God showing you? So we had that conversation, had a prayer time. 
and all. And uh, I never met her after that. COVID and you know all. Uh, so recently, I don't even I'm not able to recall where I met her. But recently, I met her, um, and she came to me and she said, "You remember? You prayed." My daughter was so far away from the Lord and all. So I, I immediately remembered because she had shared all the struggles and difficulties they were going through. Uh, only, and then she said, you know, prayer, through prayer, not just my prayer, a lot of people praying. She said, you will not believe it. My daughter is married to a pastor and they both are serving the Lord now. You know, I'm like, my goodness. What a difference, what a change. Only God can do it. I never met that lady after that. Okay, But she never stopped praying for her daughter. That's why when you said sometimes, I keep hearing stories like this. People who don't stop. You know, I, I know there are stories where uh, on the other side, maybe people are not responding. But there are also many stories where there's a huge change. So let's keep our faith and keep praying people mm. oh like that yeah intercede intercede for the people god changes his mind where there is judgment due god can grant grace and forgiveness think about moses you know these people whom he was leading did moses get upset with them yeah so upset did god get upset with them yeah, there are times where God Himself said, What are these people? You know, stiff necked people, I will destroy them and all. But the way Abraham interceded, Genesis 18, you find an Amos interceded, God forgive them. You know, Jacob is small. Even Moses interceded, said, God, your people, you brought them, what will the nation say? You know, so, and each time God says, Okay, okay, fine, <laughs> because there's somebody to intercede. So we have to become those intercessors. And God may show us coming judgments. Why is he showing us? So that we can pray and say, God, yeah, we know this may happen, but have mercy, forgive. OK, so intercession is something that we can do in these situations to stop judgment. Next, when we talk about prophetic intercession, um, it stops Satan's attacks. God can reveal to us some of the plots or schemes that Satan has. Okay? And then you know that it's something is rising up against, um, you know, maybe our family or somebody we know or our ministry. Then we can actually start to pray about it. And God will destroy that plot. Good example is when Jesus tells um, Peter, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you. This is in Luke 22, verse 31 and 32. So Jesus says, there's an attack coming, Peter, but here's the good news. I have prayed for you. Okay, So you will be fine. So we can overcome or we can... Um, destroy the plans of Satan through our prayers. Why does God reveal it? So that we can take charge and we can uh, destroy it. We can also pray protection. You got it? In general, we can pray protection over the people um, like God, whom God puts in our hearts, especially when we are leaders, there are people whom we are leading, right? Leading and, and guiding. So a part of the leadership work is to pray in such a way that we are guarding the people in the spiritual realm. So um, you see, for the Israelites, in the book of Hosea, Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13, scripture says, by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, he was preserved. So what is God saying? God is saying that Israel was delivered because of Moses right, or his obedience. Now also, preservation. They were also preserved or protected, guarded. 
because they had a leader, Moses. And what are some of the things that Moses did? He used to keep going back to God, praying to God, asking God. So when Moses was doing this for the people, they were guarded, they were protected. This word preserve is the word shamar. We have discussed all this in intercession. Shamar. Okay, so shamar is a Hebrew word which means guard, protect, watch, beware. It also means like fence, you know, hedge. When we put a hedge around our garden or our home, what are we saying? We are saying uh, no uh, pest, no insect should come inside, or you know, no animal should come inside. So that way. When we pray, God is saying through a prophet, they were preserved. So what is a prophet doing? Hearing from God, praying for the people. So prophetic prayer will protect the people. Maybe there is something that you know Satan is planning up against the church or uh, he's planning up against... Um, uh, See, there are, there are many things, right? Like he can bring the attack in any way. He can bring a sort of a mindset into the church. He can bring in an attitude into the church. Worldliness, witchcraft. Many things are there that can come against the church. But as a pastor or leaders, and we are praying for our people, God may give us that um, sort of like alerting us, yeah, discernment, and say, OK, you better pray. You better study on this subject. Sometimes you wonder, why Why should I study on this subject? You never know. Maybe God is giving us that understanding now so that tomorrow we can speak truth and we can uh, strengthen our people. So hear from God. Uh, pray for the people. God can even reveal the upcoming attack. Okay, And that is a responsibility that we have as prophetic intercessors. So this can also happen for our own lives. Sometimes you just get a sense like, uh, uh, OK, don't go there or don't go here. Suddenly you hear something happened over there. Like, wow, thank you, Jesus. You know, God revealed earlier, and we prayed, we took action, and it really helped us. So, But we are talking more in the context of intercession. Intercession is praying for other people. So God can show. And we can pray for other people. All right. So we'll keep moving on. If there are questions, you can stop me. Uh, prophetic intercession can birth prayers that release one's destiny in God. The way God, uh, the way uh, uh, Paul told Timothy, you pray. Like whatever words have been spoken about you, you pray. So. We are praying prophetically that, God, you said you are going to do this. You said you're going to release this work through my life. You said you're going to bring this divine connection. You said. So we are praying on the basis of the prophetic word. And it is releasing the purpose and destiny of God for us. You remember Zacharias, when he prayed for his son, he released purpose, destiny. Spoke you know, way ahead into the future of that child that you are going to be like this, you're going to be like that. So prophetic intercession can also release the purpose of God for one's life. OK? Um, and it's amazing. It's amazing when we when we see these things. Uh, like in practical life, maybe we are praying for someone, and we say, God is going to um, work through you in the area of arts or in the area of uh, performing arts, something. And the person is amazed. They're like, I don't, I don't know how you're saying all this, but what are you doing? You're releasing purpose, destiny, prophetic. Okay, you're interceding on the basis of what God is showing, showing you. So how can we do this? We can either do it aloud when we are with the people, we can speak, pray prophetically, or most of the time, actually 99% of the time, I think it's done silently. Because in our personal prayer or by ourselves, God puts in our hearts different people, and then we just begin to pray for them. Yes, Lord, you know we speak healing, we speak destiny. Yes, open door for this person. 
So 99% of the time, it's all personal prayer. But maybe 1% of the time, when we are with people and there's the opportunity to pray, ask God to help us pray prophetically. So when we start to pray for them, sense, hear from God and pray according to what God is showing you. So we'll come to that. Chapter 8 and Chapter 9 will give us a better idea about how to pray prophetically to release one's destiny. All right? OK, come on. Let's uh, look at the Chapter 6 here. This is about the expression. Yeah, sure. But yeah, uh, uh, this whole prophetic intercession is 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 a very nice, I mean, a good thing. But let's say uh, you and me are the believers. So if you have this prophetic like side of you and all, so you are praying for me. So God spoke with you about me and you just released to me or something. You just uh, received from God. So, so why not? that i can i i'll say like why not god speak with me directly other than speaking through another one because that would be more effective for me personally prophetic intersection uh, intersection is good but why not if 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 a question comes like this why not like this yeah. see it would generally be a confirmation in most cases god would have already spoken to us about it so when another person prays it, it's more like a confirmation. Yeah. Again, if you want to just put percentage for our understanding, I'm saying this, say 90% of the time, it's a confirmation. Maybe only 10% of the time, it's something new that they say. So generally tends to be like that. OK, fine. So next chapter here, prophetic power. Prophetic power is the expression or the release of the prophetic power to do what God wants it to do. When we consider the power of God and uh, uh, the different roles that he has, like especially ministry, office, um, office gifts, right? Uh, like apostle pastor, teacher, evangelist, prophet, what we see is the power of God is there. And the power of God is like the same power, right? It, it is there for all the ministry offices. But we see that the way that power does its work is different. So let us take, for example, in the case of somebody who's in the office of a uh, pastor. So it will be more of a shepherd's heart. We have studied that in our uh, course, where what is the function of a pastor? And uh, you know, you can go back to passages that Paul writes to Timothy about uh, how a pastor should be. Then Ezekiel 34 verses 1 to 4, there also more pastoral ministry about guiding the people, guarding the people, nurturing the people, um, protecting the people, all kinds of, uh, you know, sort of. Uh, nurturing shepherdly role let's say so god's power through a pastor will be demonstrated like that so there will be grace to take care of the people uh, now if you look at let's say uh, somebody who's an evangelist evangelist there will be god's power in their ministry also now if you take for example philip philip went to samaria and uh, he started doing the work of the ministry Miracles, signs, wonders, all that was happening and people were turning to the Lord. So it's the power of God which is available. But for an evangelist, what does an evangelist need? He needs to demonstrate the power along with the message. It should be accompanied by signs, wonders and miracles. So we'll find that somebody who's an uh, evangelist will have the power demonstrating in this way. Like a lot of... Uh, Miracles take place when they go, they preach the gospel, believe God, healing, or, you know, uh, gifts of healings, miracles, they start manifesting. But that is needed for the evangelist. So it's a power of God is same. But in every situation, uh, that, that sort of a power is given to the people. 
to demonstrate the glory of God. Now, the same way, if we consider somebody who's an apostle, what kind of power would be released? We'll come to the functions of apostle later. But apostolic means uh, gaining new ground for the gospel. Uh, it's about entering new territories for the gospel. When I say territories, we'll study that it's not just physical territories, meaning new city, new village, new country. It's more than that. We can go to another realm where uh, in, in the area of arts, in the area of music, in the area of innovation, we do something for the Lord. That's apostolic. Okay, so all that we'll study later. But the power of God will enable the person carrying that apostolic anointing to enter, expand the kingdom. The kingdom will keep expanding into all these realms. So the point I'm making is the power of God demonstrated through each office, you'll notice that it will demonstrate according to what needs to be done. Okay, so now that we've understood this when we come to the prophetic how is it demonstrated um, it will manifest it will man the supernatural will manifest in many dimensions and uh, we have seen examples of that um, deliverance is something that will happen deliverance of the captives example moses moses was a prophet and god worked through the anointing the, both the leadership anointing as well as his prophetic anointing to deliver the people. You remember he went and did the, uh, with his rod, he went and he competed with those sorcerers. That was a prophetic anointing. So miracles were taking place. Uh, but ultimately, deliverance. He was able to bring out the people. The Red Sea parted. He just brought them out. So deliverance can happen. Uh, breaking of bondages can happen. People will be set free when the prophetic anointing is released. So that expectation we can keep, that there will be freedom from uh, the works or the chains that Satan puts on us. Okay, So that makes us desire the prophetic more. Right? We feel like, OK, wow, if there's going to be deliverance, then let there be more prophetic power in our lives. So deliverance will happen when prophetic power is working. Then uh, we would find that prophetic power uh, has this, this feature of confronting demons. Okay, It confronts demons. What are the examples? Again, Moses. When the sorcerers were there, what is sorcery, witchcraft, you know, uh, the occult, or there are other connected, uh, connected practices people have, spiritism, uh, many things people practice, which are from the dark world. But the prophetic power can confront. It has the power to confront. Moses and the sorcerers. Moses showed that God is uh, greater. God's power is greater, right? Go to Elijah. Elijah and the you have the prophets of Baal and Asherah. You remember Mount Carmel, bring down fire, all that. Who who um, was victorious? Elijah. Elijah was victorious. So will there be a um, opposition from the demonic world for the prophetic? Yes. So whenever there is genuine prophetic. Satan loves imitation of what is precious. If there's something genuine, he'll come up with an imitation to cause confusion and uh, to oppose the genuine. But we can be encouraged by the fact that prophetic power will destroy the works of demons. You've seen that in the case of Moses. You've seen that in the case of Elijah. And uh, even when... Elijah was um, oppressed. Remember, he became he was um, very sad after that Mount Carmel experience. He was like, God, I don't want to live anymore. He was in that condition. So the way we understand it is, why did he go to that place? Because uh, possibility is maybe he was experiencing spiritual oppression. A lot of witchcraft was going on. 
God was releasing prophetic power through Elijah's life. But then Jezebel and all her uh, all her people, the the demonic oppression you know, that they were bringing against Elijah probably affected him uh, in, in the spiritual realm where he felt that, OK, I can't deal with this. But thank God, God helped him even in that situation and he was able to come out of it. Right. So point is, see, there will always be opposition, demonic opposition to prophetic power. But the prophetic overcomes. Prophetic is victorious. We've seen that already. So we don't have to uh, worry. Just take authority as a believer. And we will see the victory of the prophetic power. Okay. Uh, then moving on. Prophetic power has seen to release miracles. Uh, we notice this in the Old Testament, Elijah, Elisha, classic examples, right? So many miracles took place through their um, prophetic ministry. Then um, even in the New Testament, you know, you, you have um, miracles that take place, right? In, in the book of Acts, some of which can be attributed to the power of God being released through um, the lives of the apostles. So it can cause unusual miracles. Then prophetic power can impact national and political leaders. So in the Old Testament, we've already seen, uh, you know, there were generally prophets who would go to leaders and speak to them and guide them. So that was happening. Uh, but even today, there, there will be um, guidance or uh, uh, as people prophesy, the power will be released for leaders uh, and there will be an impact made on regions, countries. Okay, So I, I know I've kind of covered it very briefly, but I hope uh, it's clear. OK, so anything you would like to discuss, or should we just go to next? All right, let's move on to the next chapter, which is about prophetic song. So prophetic song is expression of the prophetic through music. When we say music, it can be um, instruments. It can be through singing. Uh, it can be, when we say singing, praise, worship, all that can be prophetic. So uh, can there be other expressions, like musical expressions, um, such as dance, dancing to a rhythm, all that? Yes, even that can happen. Even uh, artistic abilities, drama, all that also can be prophetic. Okay, But we need to hear from the Lord and become more and more sensitive to uh, what God is saying. The early example we have in scripture is the time when uh, that company of prophets remember Saul runs into the company of prophets and this company of prophets are they are carrying stringed instrument tambourine flute harp and they are prophesying so there is a connection you notice that uh, when music the right music is there the prophetic anointing will flow and there will be ability to prophesy. There will be ability to speak the word of God, release the power of God. Uh, so it, it is like that. We, we need to learn uh, how to actually do this right. And there are examples here which are, again, repeated. Um, we said in the case of Elisha, three kings, uh, they come and you know they are coming against Yeah, Jehoshaphat and two other kings, three kings, um, are, they were going out to fight against the king of Moab. So at that time, they desired to hear 
God speaking. Okay, uh, and we find that Elisha, what he does is he asks for some music to be played, and then he starts to prophesy. So, you you if you recall, remember we said uh, school of prophets where they were being trained to prophesy. So, maybe this was part of the training, and that's why when Elisha wanted to prophesy. Uh, he knew that if he goes, he, he makes this approach. First, you have some uh, music, and that music will will give re give uh, that opening for the uh, prophetic anointing to flow. So that's how he did it. He asked for a musician to come, and scripture says, then it happened. When the musician played, that the hand of the Lord came upon him, and he said, thus says the Lord. In 2 Kings chapter 3, and uh, towards the end of that verse 16. So even for us today, when we, we want to move into a time of hearing from God, music helps. OK, music really helps. You can just put on some worship music. Or uh, sometimes before we minister, uh, we, we may want a certain song or some music or we you may have heard people say like, play this uh, play this key uh, because there is something some connection okay but having said this we've also spoken and said that not always it's not always possible that you can have music maybe somewhere we are go we've gone to minister in some village where you'll get uh, music over there right and uh, we can't say that Oh, right music was not there, so I was not able to minister properly. We should not say such things. Whether it's there or not there, prophetic power will flow. But if it is available and we know how to tap into it, we can make use of it. Okay, so yeah, sure. Can we tell like using this prophetic ministry when we when we are going? So prophetic ministry through intercession through word or through so we can say uh, prophetic music is it because of there is context in the bible or there is some i mean older reference in the bible is that the reason or so if, if we see if you observe these days there are so many ministries have come like prophetic painting prophetic dance so how we can all consider this and there is a negatives also for all these things I, I agree there are positives. On the other side, there are negatives also. Yeah. Sure. See, expressions of the prophetic, uh, as you stated, there are, there are a rising a number of expressions these days. Suddenly, you've never heard about, if you've never heard about prophetic painting, somebody's doing a workshop on prophetic painting. You know, somebody's doing a, a workshop on prophetic something else, some art. It is going to happen because if you recall, remember we studied about the Dark Ages, 400, uh, you know, 2400 AD, and then started the restoration of the church where God started restoring um, revelation and his power in different ways. Then we spoke about um, uh, what was that, uh, the uh, Anabaptists, uh, baptism uh, of water. Water baptism, the meaning of that was restored. And slowly, many other things, right? If you recall holiness movement, uh, then healing movement, then Pentecostal movement, Holy Spirit being poured out. And now in the 2000s, what are we saying? We are saying it's something known as, uh, people call it the saints movement, Okay, where uh, the saints will rise up, all believers will rise up. And God is also restoring the understanding of the fivefold ministry offices. So the apostolic, you'll hear more about the apostolic. You'll hear more about the prophetic. Earlier, we, we didn't hear so much. But because God is pouring out, it will be more and more. OK, so that is a given. We will see people coming up with all these things. Now, how to discern, how to know whether it is genuine or not. So the, the ultimate thing is look for fruit. Look for fruit. See, if is a sea, if uh, is a tree giving us good fruit, which is nourishing for our health and our body. Only once the seed is planted and the tree grows up, fruit comes. We can tell. Sometimes in the initial stages, it's very difficult, unless 
something is immediately hitting us and you feel it's not glorifying Jesus the way this is being done, then you can tell immediately, uh, I don't want to go with this because it's off. But sometimes it's not that easy. We can't tell. We can just give it some time, let the seed grow, let the fruit come. Then if it's an ungodly fruit, you'll come to know. So judge on the basis of the fruit. Like fruit is uh, is uh, dependent, right? It depends on the people. See, if you are performing uh, a prophetic ministry through an expression of painting or through a dance, it maybe gives a good fruit for you. It may not give me a good fruit, right? It, it's dependent, right? Can we tell like we have to uh, we have to consider it according to the word of God? No, I didn't get it, Anand. See, because if let's say we are releasing the prophetic. Everyone can release the prophetic. Yeah, it's not dependent on the. If you are, uh, if you are uh, looking at uh, prophecy in in the expression of music, so there are many incidents that had happened in the Old Testament. So we have a reference for it, and if we if if someone is performing, they can easily refer to some situation which had happened. So what I'm saying is, if someone is performing through another expression, which is which is not there in Bible, like what? It's some example. Like paint, painting, painting, dancing. Yeah. I heard these these expressions also yeah. recent days. So how can we consider these things? We, do we have to accept by is, is is it there according to the word or not, or is it according to the fruit? Like how you are saying. See, fruit is the you have to look for the fruit. Is it glorifying God or not? That's the, the question. Is it drawing people closer to God? Is it helping people get rooted and grounded in the word? Okay, these questions we can ask. Now, uh, as far as it would always be nice if you see an expression in the uh, Bible. Okay, it would always be nice. Now, if you say art, we can always go back to people like Bezalel. God gave him the anointing in the book of Exodus, if I'm not wrong. God gave him the anointing to do the, the art of the, the tabernacle. So is artistic ability from God? Yes. Artistic ability flows from God. So Bezalel, through the anointing, he did his artistic work. So it's possible, painting very much. If you go back to scripture, you see Miriam, a prophetess. She danced with her tambourine. So can dance be prophetic? Yes, it can be. Okay, if you go back to the way um, minister, like prophets uh, express themselves, there's a lot of drama. Like if you look at Jeremiah, the way he presented the um, the prophetic word or, um, you know, he he looks at or isaiah like he he looks at the uh, the potter and his wheel got it so the way you find the prophetic word coming there's something like a drama the way it's expressed uh, and, and the you know there are images on the basis of which they talk so somebody may put up an image in a boardroom and talk from that image it's prophetic. Can I can I find uh, you know boardroom uh, strategy in the Bible? Maybe if I look hard, I can find a similar scenario. But yeah, it's happening. See, recently I heard one girl. She was sharing that uh, she loves uh, creative expressions. I know we are um, done with time, but I'll just share this one thing. So she loves creative expressions and how God is speaking to her. She wants to release more and more of what God is sharing. So we were just asking her, how are you planning to do it? So she this year she has made one, um, uh, like a timetable, like every month I'm going to do one thing creative. So she does stitching, like crochet. So the image that God is giving her in her mind, she wants to stitch that out so that it is a blessing. OK. Uh, and she also likes um, like cake decoration. See, these are all things that you tell me where in the Bible. Tell me verse. Cake decoration. So you can't find it. But you see, something broadly artistic anointing, it is there. God gives us ability. So she wants to do the decoration as God is showing her. Okay. 
So this is all so unique. This is all so unique. Should we stop it? No, because God is pouring out His His anointing, and all these expressions are coming up around us. Who knows? You know, maybe some may have a fashion line, <laughs> clothes that prophetic. They hear God, these colors and these patterns. It may bring healing. It may bring encouragement to people. Why should we stop it? Let it be. But see the fruit of it. How is it done? Is it done in a proper way? Uh, you know, honoring the Lord uh, and you know, uh, glorifying His name. Those are the things. When I'm saying fruit, fruit, I'm I mean that. Look at that. But if you are not seeing fruit, then discard it. People are just saying, "Oh, we are doing dance, this and that." But if you can't see fruit in it, people's lives are not being built up in God. Then maybe something is off. Okay, yeah, sure. So with that, we will stop for today. And I request uh, anyone online, off offline, please pray. Anand, <laughs> please pray. Yeah. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the class, oh Lord, and thank you for Nancy, Mom, oh Lord. Thank you for teaching her many things, oh Lord. Lord, help us to dwell in all the things what you have uh, uh, taught us, oh Lord. Help us to grow more in your prophetic ministry and your prophetic knowledge, oh Lord, through the word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Release the prophet. Okay. 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 Okay.